everybody, welcome to Elevate. I'm Deanna Johnson Cawthon and I am your host. And I'm your co-host, Adriana Cawthon. Okay, so we all know by now that this is the time in the show where we talk about what's in the news, what's been trending. So tell us what's been going on in the news. What's the hot topics? So did you know about the fact that Elon Musk mm-hmm. has plans to have people on Mars by 2026? No, I didn't know that. Where do I sign up? You know I've been talking about this. You know I've posted about this. I posted just a several weeks ago, several months ago about the all the craziness here in the U.S. and how I thought we should move to another country. But hey, Another country, another planet, I'm in, I'm good. <laughs> that's a bit drastic. Okay. I, I don't know if that's possible, though. First of all, Elon Musk started his Mars mission project in 2016. Oh. So the application process is closed. Okay. Secondly, I really don't think you'd like it there very yeah. much. Yeah. The temperature on Mars is 81, negative 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh. That's very cold. Not exactly uh, pleasant Miami Beach weather. No, 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 uh, no, no. To say the least. Uh-uh. Also, only 0.13% of Mars's at- atmosphere uh-huh. contains oxygen, which means that you would have to wear a spacesuit Ooh. all the time, which Ooh. is neither fashionable nor comfortable. Uh-uh, uh-uh, not at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in addition to that, mm-hmm. I've heard that astronaut food is not exactly a culinary delicacy. You'll be eating stuff out of tubes and stuff. Ick. There's not going to be any fried chicken Uh-oh. or lasagna or Uh-oh. Oreos or anything like that. Okay, okay. Well, I'm not going to Mars. And if that isn't bad enough, yeah. uh, the, the survival rate won't be very high and a lot of the colonists will die. Forget the survival rate. You had me not going at Oreos and non, not eating fried chicken. <laughs> So, That's um, some priorities. Yeah, yeah. Not going to Mars. Not going. Um, so, on a more serious note, though, um, let's talk about um, the most recent police shooting. It's actually kind of hard to keep up with it all. Uh, but this is the one, I believe, in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, um, that happened pretty much right when they were giving the verdict for the Derek Chauvin case. Um, this is the guy who murdered George Floyd. What do you think about this? Yes, I heard that 42-year-old Anthony Brown Jr. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. was shot in the head multiple times by police mm-hmm. during a drug-related search. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. First of all, I think it is absolutely tragic that mm-hmm. another black person yeah. has been unjustly executed by the police. Wow, wow. Secondly, I am just in shock at how bold these police officers are. Mm-hmm. They just saw Derek Chauvin get convicted of second-degree murder mm-hmm. for killing George Floyd. Yeah. But they still had the audacity to kill another black man for a nonviolent offense. Well, um, I agree. It's a shame. Um, and we need to continue to hold our leaders, um, whoever they are, uh, in uh, accountable so that we can achieve real police reform. Don't you think? Absolutely. That's right. Well, um, in other news... I just heard that Governor Kemp appointed the first black chairman of the Stone Mountain Memorial Association. Yay! Yes, the Reverend Abraham Mm Mosley, a well-known pastor and advocate from the Athens, Georgia area, was sworn in this week as the new chairman of the Stone Mountain Memorial Board of... Memorial Association Board of Directors. Right, right, right. I read that in AGC. It's all over the news. Um, What I want to know is, does that mean, uh, does putting a black man on this board mean that we're going to get to blow the faces of Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee and uh, Jefferson Davis off of the mountain. That's that, what I want to know. No, have. that sounds rather extreme. Okay. Well, I don't think that can happen. First mm-hmm. of all, um, they're protected by law. The carvings on the mountain are okay. protected by Georgia law. Okay. And second of all, um, it would take a whole lot of dynamite to blow them off the wall <laughs> of the mountain. Yeah. And that would leave a dent in the mountain. That and would not, be so ugly. Not to mention who who's paying for all that. Yeah, I mean, do you want your taxpayer dollars to go to that? To, I don't know. I don't think so. And uh, so it was just an idea. I don't know. I thought so. Well, let's take another little break. Don't go away, though. We will be right back. Our next 
next segment is called Around the Town. And this is the time when we share with you some of our adventures that we uh, go on uh, in the Metro Atlanta area, as well as in other states and cities, um, you know, uh, in the region and beyond. So today's um, Around the Town takes us to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, do you remember that trip? Oh yeah, I remember it. We took that trip several months ago and we had a ton of fun and we were even able to bring our dog Carolina with us. Yeah, we had a great time and we took a bunch of pictures and some footage, um, video footage. So take a look. This week's Around the Town takes us north to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Chattanooga is just a short two-hour drive from Atlanta, Georgia, and makes for an easy weekend getaway. Although our family had been to Chattanooga to visit the Tennessee Aquarium and spent time riding on the Tennessee Valley Railroad train, we discovered that there were lots of other things to see. After checking into our adorable Airbnb, we made our way downtown to the Sticky Fingers restaurant and ate a delicious barbecue lunch. After lunch, we drove a short distance to the sculpture fields at Montague Park. We walked around and viewed several large, interesting pieces. Some of us, no names will be mentioned, were so enamored with the art that they decided to become one with the sculpture. As we traveled around to the different venues, we got to see wonderful views of the city and the accompanying Tennessee River Valley. No trip would be complete without a little bit of retail therapy, so my youngest daughter, Adriana, and I made our way over to Warehouse Row, a shopping center near downtown Chattanooga. One of the most sobering parts of our trip was when we went to the Chattanooga National Cemetery, which encompasses 120.9 acres and, as of 2014, had more than 50,000 internments. Walking across the Walnut Street Bridge, a revitalized pedestrian bridge which offers access to museums and parks, was another highlight of our trip. We absolutely love Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we can't wait to return. We're going to take another break, but don't go away, because we will be right back. to talk about uh, how to create a side hustle or a side gig um, to bring in some extra cash. But before we get into that, you know what time it is. It is time for our Did You Know Facts given to us by none other than Adriana. She's going to grace us with some obscure but interesting Did You Know Facts. So Adriana, hit us with some facts. Yeah, so did you know mm -hmm. that Tuesdays are the most productive day of the week? Mm. On Tuesdays, people are still rested from the weekend, mm -hmm. but they've also had the benefit of having readjusted to the workplace on Monday, which means that on Tuesday they are at optimum productivity. Well, that's great. That, that makes sense. I, 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 now that you mention it, I always feel more productive on Tuesdays. I thought it was tacos. So. Tacos have Taco never made Tuesday. anyone more Taco productive. Taco Tuesday. I just thought I correlated my productivity with the tacos. What, you think they gave you an energy burst or something? I did. I did. I did. But 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 makes. But now that you're telling me this, it all is just fitting together like a the pieces to a puzzle. Okay. okay what else? Okay. So did you know that multitasking is impossible? and that attempting to do so is actually really bad for your brain. Mm -hmm. uh, the brain is only capable of truly focusing on one task at a time. Mm -hmm. And when you're multitasking, you're actually switching back and forth between the two tasks really quickly rather than doing them both at the same time. Okay. Uh, studies show that multitasking can lead to a 40% drop in productivity as well as a 10% drop in IQ. Oh boy. So if you want to stay sharp and productive, it's best to focus on one task at a time. Oh boy, I'm in trouble. I am a serial or big multitasker. Here, I thought I was doing a good thing, Adriana, and all the while I was dumbing myself down. I was losing brain cells. But You're not it. losing brain cells. There you go. There's the drop in IQ. Okay, IQ, not IQ brain cells. Is, yeah, it's IQ, not brain cells. 
Okay, well, it's not all right. I'm brain cells. Better. Um, I'm good now. You're good now. So you're not going to multitask anymore. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. And you're going to get your IQ points back by focusing. Yes, yes, yes. I am reformed. I am reformed. Okay, that's good. Do you have any more? Did you know facts? Okay, so. Um, did you know that if you spend one hour, seven days a week, mm -hmm. um, for three to five years independently studying a topic, mm -hmm. you can have the same amount of expertise as someone who has a bachelor's degree in it? Wow, that's impressive. That just goes to show you that you can always continue to learn and be the better you. Always, always, always. Those were super interesting facts, Adriana. Thank you for sharing. Now she's told us uh, some of her did you know things. Um, let's switch gears and talk more about how to elevate your finances. The pandemic has actually taken a financial toll on a lot of families. According to a new ABC News Washington Post poll, more women, though, say than men say that they're worse off financially now than they were a year ago. Yes, a quarter of women polled say that their family's financial situation is worse today mm. than it was before the pandemic-related shutdowns mm. of schools and offices began in March of 2020, mm -hmm. compared to 18% of men, according to the poll. So people are looking for ways to basically bridge the gap, the financial gap. Um, and a side hustle or side gig is a great way to do that. So let's talk a little bit about that. Now, one of the things that um, my husband and I have done as a side hustle, some of you um, who know us may know this already, is we refinish furniture. We have a business called Revamp Furnishings, uh, and we restore antiques and other furniture um, and sell it to various customers around the city. Uh, we also refinish uh, heirloom pieces for people. Those are pieces that maybe someone has had in their family from their grandma or their great aunt and it's been sitting in the garage and um, needing repair uh, and they want us to come and fix it for them. So that's one of our side hustles. Adriana? Yes, and I've got my own side hustles as well. Well, currently I am a full-time college student, mm -hmm. but on the side I teach piano lessons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Another thing that I've done in the past well, I have a baking business, mm -hmm. and around the holidays, I take orders and I bake things for people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so now, um, what things does a person need to consider um, when they are looking to do a side gig? What, what are some things that you need to look at, people need to look at and consider? Well, one thing that you need to consider mm -hmm. is how much money you would have to pay in overhead costs to get started on your side gig. Yes, exactly. The entire, the whole point of a side gig is to um, get some quick cash on your hands. Mm -hmm. So trying to break into an expensive industry with a high entry barrier is not the best mm -hmm. idea. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Another thing that you have to consider mm -hmm. is how much time you have to invest in your side gig. Sure. If your side business is um, very time consuming, it mm -hmm. could be distracting or exhausting and reduce your productivity at your main job. Which is counterproductive. Yeah, and you don't want to get fired because of your side gig. Exactly, which would be a bad thing. So now, we need to understand that not every hobby can be turned into money or monetized. Um, how can a person know if a hobby is something that can be turned into a side gig, into a job? Well, it's easy to monetize skills that are in high demand. Of course. If you know how to fix things such as cars or bicycles sure. or furnitures or even clothing, that could be a very good side gig mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it's something that people need. Sure. But you can also monetize skills that might not seem so practical at first glance. Mm -hmm. If you're a good artist or if you're a musician, you could make money by selling your art or by teaching online classes. Sure. Sure, sure. One of the things, another thing that your father and I have done, and we don't advertise this just simply because we're very busy, but we do resumes. I guess I am advertising it at this point. Don't call us, we'll call you. Uh, but uh, we do it for family and friends, um, and because we're both writers, 
Um, and so we had a lot of experience with putting together resumes, and which is an important thing that people need. It's the first thing that gets your foot into a door, uh, gets you an interview um, to, for a job. So there's all kinds of things, like you said, if you already, if the services are in high demand, you can look at what your skills are and see whether this is something that uh, you can turn into a side gig. So we hope that helps. Well, we're going to take another break, but we will be right back. Don't go away. So we're back, and this week's In the Spotlight segment features Elizabeth Omolami. Um, she is the daughter of the iconic civil rights leader Hosea Williams, and she's also the CEO of the Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless organization. I had a chance to sit down with Ms. Omolami and talk with her about the work she's doing here in the metro Atlanta area and beyond. Uh, so take a listen to our interview. Well, Ms. Omolami, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here today. I know you've got lots and lots of things going on, so I'm just thrilled that I get to talk to you a little bit about what you're doing and what your organization is doing. So let's just start from the top. Um, you are the daughter of civil rights uh, icon Hosea Williams, um, and your mother is Juanita Williams. Um, she was a state representative. Can you share with my audience um, about what it was like to grow up in a household um, with, the, with activists and how that paved the way for you to do what you're doing now? Okay, yes, Deanna, thank you so much for having me on today. Yes. I always like to speak, to speak with uh, brilliant uh, young black women <laughs> and you're certainly one oh. that I, uh, I would oh. be glad to give my time to. That's terrific. Um, yeah, I uh, actually grew up in Savannah, Georgia. Uh -huh. uh, saw a cross uh -huh. burn in my yard, full yes. flame uh, at five years old. Oh my. Um, uh, my father was uh, a chemist. Yes. He was the first black chemist to be hired by the United States government, the De Department of Agriculture. Wow. And um, he quit his job. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and started a movement and started wow. immediately without any training, wow. you know, without any knowledge of exactly what to do, uh -huh. but to try to go after what was right. And we started marching. I went to jail the first time when I was nine years old. Oh my goodness. Wow. First time they had us out there marching wow. and singing songs and and wow. I remember in Savannah, we, all we had to eat that day was bologna sandwiches. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Good old bologna sandwiches. <laughs> wow. But that's amazing. So and you have hold it on to the bars. Yes. Really? So you have literally grown up in the movement. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. From wow. the wow. inside, as inside as you can get. I see. Of the civil rights movement from, from the age of, of four or five years old. Wow, that's amazing. So now um, let's talk a little bit about um, your, your organization, the organization that originally started with your father. He started it back, uh, well, Hosea Feed Williams, Feed the Hungry and Homeless, back in 1971. Um, and since his death, you have taken over as the CEO. Is that correct? Correct. He passed away. In 2000, actually, right after Martin Luther King was killed, right. the staff was torn apart. They didn't wow. know what to do. Uh, they, they, they wanted to follow Ralph Abernathy, and he didn't know if he wanted to, you know, do yeah. that. It, so much went on, and too much to tell here. Wow, wow. And walking wow. down Auburn Avenue, my dad saw a homeless man eating out of a trash can. Mm. And, you know, Auburn Avenue was Atlanta's Tulsa white uh, Definitely. Uh, uh, Wall yes. Street. That's we right. had all our black businesses there. And he asked the man why in Atlanta, Georgia, with all this black money and all this prosperity, are you eating out of a garbage can? What did you do? Wow. And the man said he hadn't eaten in three days. Oh. And so my father, Hosea Williams, was a man of action. He Definitely. was not a man of committees and yes. discussion. 
Yes. He immediately took him into the Yassim's fish that's still there today. Yes, it part is. of the fish sandwich. And the man was so hungry that he ate through the paper. Oh my. He ate through the paper to get to the food. Wow. And so the next day, we were feeding homeless people out of the uh, educational building at Wheat Street Baptist Church. That mm -hmm. was 1970. Yes. We had our 50th Thanksgiving dinner yeah. uh, last year. And, right. but when he passed in 2000 and I took over, we grew yes. the organization expanded to a year round, yes. you know, spiral of life sure, sure. and every round gets higher and higher. Wow. So now we are the largest uh, female yes. run African-American food bank yes. in this region and wow. we have a lot of other programs as well. So I want to switch gears on you a little bit. Uh, as you know, recently, uh, Georgia, Republican leg legislators passed um, laws restricting that would, in effect, it restrict voting access. Um, what are your thoughts about these actions and how should we respond to overcome these obstacles? Well, I, I think that we needed to have responded before the bill was passed. Yeah. In a much stronger way. But now that the bill is passed, yeah. we really need to read it. And yeah. those that can read it and understand it. Yeah. I have not read it, but I'm going to read it. Right. Um, prepare our community for it. If you have to now have some ID yes. to you know, uh, mail in voting, right. we need to make sure that, that that's happening, yeah. those of us that speak yeah. to the population. This that's whole right. thing about not feeding people in line is yeah. just and, silliness. Yes. I mean, you know, I'm, yeah, we're going to feed yeah. people in line. Oh, we ridiculous. always have voter registration. Yes. We do uh, six major events a year. Okay. At those events, wow. that's where we register people to vote. That's excellent. And at these polling places on voting day, yes. we're giving out sandwiches. We're giving out uh, beverages. Yes. We're going to keep doing that. Of course, of course. But I don't think that... Uh, yeah. The, the African-American community or the BIPOC people yeah. of color yes. understand how aggressively yes. this uh, uh, yeah. right-wing community is coming yes. at our hard-won yeah. victories. Exactly. And, and, I, and I think relaxed, we're, mm -hmm. we're laid back. Yes. Like, oh, well, they're not going to take away that right yeah. as, as they're doing it. Exactly. Exactly. I think so we may have underestimated it. We have, yeah, and we have to get involved civically. Yes, we have to get to know those congressmen, those senators, those yes. city council people. Yes, and and form a little group in yes. your family and assign everybody take turns going to these community development meetings. I love going that. to the meetings that yes. happen at the state legislature. Yes. At, uh, listening to the Zoom calls that come down from Washington. That's Otherwise, right. you know, we're going to be ignorant of yep. activities and we won't know until it's too late. Exactly. So if there was a time for us to get involved, it's this now. is it. Yeah. So, but um, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering how can we get our young people involved? I think that other than listening and, yeah. you know, they're the best on, on the internet. Yeah. Oh, they yeah, are. For some of these organizations like Hosea Helps. Yes. And volunteer and say, I'll be the person in charge of political engagement oh, at wow. your organization. Oh, wow. Every week there is a Black leadership meeting on Zoom that's held oh. by Nancy Flake Johnson at the <laughs> National Urban League. Yeah. Get involved with yes. the Urban League, the NAACP. Yes, you're right. Uh, and Woodall over there is yes. a great young pastor to be involved with. Yeah. So uh, uh, do your research, yeah. read, yes. and also I, I encourage young people to do letter writing campaigns. Really? You find an issue and you've got a thousand followers or yes. five, all of y'all write a letter to this senator or that congressman or yes. that city and let them know because every letter yes. that comes into a politician, they count it seven. People. Really? So every letter is seven people. Really? So if they get a big stack of letters on their desk. They yes. are going to pay attention to whatever the issue is. Wow. And of course, vote, but not just vote, but be active with organizations that already exist. Yes. You don't need to recreate the wheel. That's right. Just, we need young people at Hosea Feed the Hungry uh, so badly right now.
we have a young professionals uh, a yeah. group at Hosea. Yes. Uh, and uh, we're reestablishing it. Actually, it was run by Daniel, a young man named Daniel Dickey before, yeah. and yeah. then uh, before that by Kim Poma, who not who went on and yes. got. You know, uh, yeah. in her in her uh, career. Yes. But that group is the group that's going to make sure that Jose feed the hungry. Hosea yeah. helps last the next fifty years. That's right. As I said, this is our fiftieth anniversary. Yes, that's right. That's right. So that they you're completely right. eliminate yeah. poverty, which I'm all for that. Wow. Let's eliminate homelessness. Amen. Yes. Let's eliminate poverty in America. Nobody. Amen. You know, everybody living equally. That's that's yeah. great. That but be, yeah. until that happens, yeah, we uh, gotta work. We gotta work. This gotta work. Great. And they have to know that their lives are not their own. They have a responsibility wow. to the community. Wow. And they have to be told that and taught that. Yes. That's not something you just no, 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 about. no. You're right about that. They and and to give back, to pay it forward. Um, you know, we are blessed to be a blessing, all of them. I'm excited about these young people who want to get involved and we're excited about your organization and all that you guys do. Um, I found out so much more, even just talking to you today. I'm, I'm, you may see me doing, uh, calling the organization and volunteering yes. myself. Yes, so, please do. Yes, this please is great. Do. We can never have too many volunteers because now we give mm -hmm. out, uh, we don't yeah. give out a food. 35 food boxes a week because yes. we have these partners yes. that we train to be who we are. Yes. They come and get a hundred boxes. Oh my. Wow. That's amazing. Boxes for Clarkston, Union City, yeah. Riverdale, et cetera. Yeah. So yeah. we need to constantly have food available. And yeah. we really want to thank public supermarkets because yeah. they have made a donation of a uh, half a million dollars worth of food to oh, us. Wow, that's amazing. And that is a great partnership with Publix and we yes. just bless them for it. That's amazing. Well, Miss Omalami, you are a phenomenal woman. I am blessed to talk to you today. Keep doing what you do, you and your staff. And, uh, and, and, you, and don't be surprised if you see me and my daughter. All right, look, find me. I'll oh, be we'll somewhere be around. <laughs> All right, thank you and have a great day. You too. All right, bye-bye.org. Okay, I'll put that up there. Thank okay. you. Okay, bye right. bye. Bye-bye. We're gonna take one more short break, but we will be right back. Well, we're back, but before we go, we want to give you, our viewers, a chance to be on our Elevate talk show. Have you done something to improve or elevate your life or someone else's life? Uh, elevate, our show, wants to know about it. It could be something creative that, uh, that you've done to overcome a challenging situation. It could be something you've done to improve your health, like you've quit smoking, uh, or you've lost weight, or you've beat cancer. Maybe you started that business, that side gig that we were talking about earlier. Um, share your story with us, and you might be featured in our next In the Spotlight segment. To share your stories, go to our Elevate YouTube channel and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Then email your stories and pictures to elevateytchannel at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Also, become a friend of the Elevate Facebook page uh, by clicking the link in the description below. And that will allow you to share your stories and pictures with us on Facebook. Right. And so we just want to thank you for spending time with us this week. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our Elevate YouTube channel. Also, if you live in DeKalb County, Georgia, you can catch our show on Comcast Channel 25. Well, have a great week, everybody. See you next time.